On today's little adventure, we're at a place called Bonnie Clare on the way to Scotty's Castle. We'll start off here. This is a bunkhouse. You can see it had multiple rooms. So got some of the door frame here. Uh, here we go. Here's one where the door frame's actually still in. And nothing to be jumping up and down about, but it's still part of the site. We'll eventually go over there. And that is what's remaining of the old well system for this thing, which a big mill and furnace to process the ores from the mines in the surrounding area. So let's start off at this building. the size of that timber. This is pretty neat. <clears throat> I wonder what that was used for because there's another one just over here. I was wrong. It's not a timber, it's just a piece of wood. Now, I don't know if this was a bunkhouse or an administrative building. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer to it without stabbing my foot. There we go. Sad. Now this one, I believe was cold storage. Yeah, I brought my flashlight with me. And the thickness of the walls, shelves, a lot of shelves. They even used tin to cover up the cracks. Get yourself a dirt floor and then a stack in the back. So more likely so than not that this was actually a cold storage. Well built though. Okay, let's head up to the thing that everybody wants to see, the mill. Essentially, these were for melting the ore. See the fire brick right here. There's the funnel. So the ore was placed in here, superheated in that furnace up there. Essentially just a big crucible. I love it when people come on out and disrespect a site. Even though it's chalk graffiti, the, whoever did this 
Um, also did painting in other places. Just really wrong. Just leave it alone so other people can enjoy it. Now these right here were holding tanks. And judging from the finest of the tailing piles out there, these holding tanks were actually leech tanks. That right there, weird cone thing, that is actually coming out of those big steel crucibles. Little drainage pipe right there. Yeah, there's the valve. Which you would use to open up. Can you imagine being the poor sap whose job was it to climb underneath here and break open that valve? so that all this fluid can drain out. Okay, let's head on up to the next level. So that you know that the mines that this mill serviced are way, way back inside the mountain. It's actually several miles. Looks more like a fort wall than it does a mill wall. Question is, how much longer is this building gonna be around? Now this is all slag. This is the garbage after the ore has been processed. It's remains of a battery. A big nest. A big nest has actually been there for a few years. bottom of the furnace. I like how the nest, it was built on an open window frame. See, this is coming down so much, that squeaking, that's me. See, I'm actually making it squeak. Okay, up to the next level. So this was a conveyor crusher system. So the ore was coming down from up there where the trucks dropped it off. Conveyed on down, here they had a crusher. This was basically the crusher area. And it was from here, 
Okay, that's all crushed material. And there's the gates. It was let down. And they probably had another conveyor that let it right over there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get up there. Still got a little ways to go, but I figure I'd come on over and show you this, the bottom of this hopper. It's not gonna be around much longer. See, it's rusting through. There's the bottom of the conveyor. Here's the bin. We were just standing right over there. These larger rocks weren't sent down by the miners. Those were sent down by people coming up here. So that's the track where the conveyor belt would have ran. So continue on up. Next to the top level, which the top, very top's up there. Oh, here we go. Or was dumped up there. There was probably some type of pre-screening Came down into this ore bin, onto a conveyor belt system, which runs right through there, over to here, and then continued its way on down until it was processed. It would have been something neat to see this all when it was in its prime. Also with this view, you can see some more slag down there, the black stuff. Also, you can see the railroad that came through here. The town of Thorpe, later to be called Bonnie Clare, was actually a railroad town and we got about three railroads that come through this area. And that right there, that well, even though it provided water for this mill, it also provided water for the uh, trains that were coming through. The other interesting thing about the train stop, which again is where that well is, there's also another train stop a little bit further up on that side of that ridge, is the materials used to build Scotty's Castle was dropped off there, then wagoned all the way down to Grapevine Canyon. Okay. With this out of the way, I'll meet you down there by that well. So this is all that's left of the ghost town of Bonnie Claire, formerly known as Thorpe. It's a pretty good size well. We'll go check that out here in a little bit. But first, let's check out the caretaker's buildings. Look at that, even the curtain's still there. <clears throat> and again, like I mentioned before, they use cloth to help insulate. It must have been like a little privy, a little bathroom. So this was actually a dual plex, duplex because you got a door here and a door here. There used to be a wall. You can actually tell there used to be a wall here. And over here, this was added much later. This is actually a trailer that somebody integrated into the building. Nice little sink. 
So that's what this is. So there's the outside of it. And the only reason I am giving the actual name of this site is the highway is right over there. That person probably lives way up to one of those remote mines. There's like about five privately owned mines back there that are very remote. But people are already coming out here and graffitiing and shooting and destroying. Might as well give the location so other people can come out here and see it before the inconsiderate people destroy it all. Now this came down because of wind. I remember this building in 97. It wasn't what you call uh, the best built in the world. But what's the main showstopper here is this well. Now think about this. This well had to provide enough water for not only the mill up there, but also the railroad, which runs right there. See if I can get a little bit closer to the edge. Ooh, shaky, shaky. Uh, that's basically what it looks like going down. And yes, there is water down there. The water table here is only 75 feet, so it's pretty easy to get to. And this was the pump house or pump building. So this is all that is left of Bonnie Claire. Just a very big well, pump house, an old caretaker's place. No clue what this was used for. Okay, I have one more thing to show you, and I'll meet you over there. Before I leave Bonnie Claire, figure I'll come and show you the only two graves in the town. Nineteen oh seven to nineteen eleven. So Dorothy was a child, and eighteen ninety eight to the year is gone. So I have no clue. It's the only two graves out here in Bonnie Claire. It's not even a cemetery. This just show, just showing you how lonely it is out here. Way out there, if you see that white truck, that's the US 95. Those trees over there is a little spring. All right, there's a huge dry lake bed. Then the railroad, 
bed and the old stagecoach route are right over here. It's a very lonely place to be. I'm showing you guys this because I know some of you people enjoy these older graves. Now granted, I know the crosses and the placards are new. It's because what they were was just a cement block with the name of the person on it. Uh, nothing too spectacular, so some people came out here and dressed up the graves a little bit. And with that, I'm calling it end today's little adventure. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. Hopefully this will get you inspired enough to go out and explore on your own. If so, remember, have fun, but most of all, be safe.